Sleep. It's magical. Dreamy. No pun. Mystical, even. But for a lot of us, it is deceitfully evasive. Getting a solid night's sleep is like finding the pot of gold at the end of a rainbow or spotting a four-leaf clover. And why am I craving lucky charms all of a sudden? Anyway, a recent Harvard survey said one in four adults suffer mild insomnia. One in four. Not to mention, 2020 has only increased our stress levels, which affects our ability, or lack thereof, to downshift and get what we need the most, sleep. Nearly 40% of Americans say that they often feel tired or fatigued because of stress. It's no surprise with everything we're going through, we find ourselves staring at the ceiling until the sun comes up, while our minds gorge an endless buffet of what ifs and what thens. We all know the usual tips, uh, reduce caffeine, exercise every day, and stop mindlessly scrolling through Instagram, but today I'm going to share two incredibly interesting tips that actually work, and you've probably I've never heard of before. So put on your PJs, find your favorite blanket, and listen in as we stop searching for fairy dust and crash Mr. Sandman's sleeping party. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's calm it down in three, two, one. Sleep is a must. But it's always the first thing we give up when it comes to everything that we're carrying. So today, I'm going to get straight to the point in sharing these two techniques. Numero uno, give the remote to Tony. We've all been there. We're dozing off during another episode of The Crown or whatever it is you're watching right now. Fine, you say, turning off the TV and walking to bed. Cozy socks. Warm blanket, hmm, good call, you say to yourself as you shut off the light. Eyes closed, you think to yourself, wait, did I lock the door? I think so, maybe? Yeah, I I did, I did. (sighs) Okay, wait, is, did I lock the car? Is the car locked? Yeah, I I, I lock it every night, why would it, why would tonight be any different? Go to sleep. Okay, okay, you're, you're right. You're right. You know, you didn't call your mom today. Seriously, am I thinking about this right now? It doesn't stop. One thought after another. They've been waiting for it to be quiet to completely dive bomb you. And they're doing a pretty good job. Enter your default mode network. It's a fancy scientific term for wandering mind. It's just kind of looking around, relaxed, no real interest. It's the mind at rest. The brain is in neutral gear. Think of someone in your life that's a daydreamer. Blue skies, pretty relaxed all the time. Use their name, but for this example, I'm going to use the name Wanda. No offense to Wanda's. Wanda as in wandering mind. I don't know, just kind of clicked for me. Now, the complete opposite of default mode network, or Wanda, is task positive network. I'm going to call him Tony. It's the closest thing to the acronym I could find of task positive network. Tony is always focused. He's like the baseball player, hitting it out of the park every time the ball is thrown. If Wanda is in neutral, Tony is in drive. Let me open this up a little bit. When we're laying there trying to sleep, Wanda is flipping through a litany of Netflix shows. Not landing anywhere, she's just flipping through one show for a few minutes, eh, then another for a few, so on and so on. Not necessarily looking for anything, just browsing. That's what our mind is doing when we lay there. It's aimless, it has no direction. It's channel surfing, again, Wanda is the default mode network. It's science. Now, take the remote from Wanda and hand it to Tony. Tony, he's like, here, let's watch this. He says as he turns to a mystery and all of a sudden, you're hooked, trying to solve the puzzle. 
But it was only when Tony found something specific to tune into that your mind became engaged. That's the task positive network. Tony. Trying to fall asleep is no different. Once we get our mind on a simple singular task, it will focus on this task until it's bored enough to finally go to sleep. Hence where the old adage of counting sheep dating back from the 12th century comes from. Giving your mind one menial, boring task to focus on. And when our thoughts come to mind, and they will, go back to the task. Now for some, focusing on breathing in and breathing out will do the trick. Noticing how your chest or your stomach will rise and fall. Others count down from a hundred and halfway through they fall asleep. Now you can do either of these or you can count sheep. There is a wonderful technique that encompasses both breathing and counting that is incredibly successful called the 478 method. It's as simple as it sounds. You may want to write this down. 478. Inhale through your nose for 4 seconds. Hold your breath for 7 seconds. And then slowly exhale through your mouth for 8 seconds. So one more time, I'm going to say that once more. Inhale through your nose for 4 seconds. Hold your breath for 7 seconds. And slowly exhale through your mouth for 8 seconds. I would walk you through this right now, but I don't want you to fall asleep and miss the rest of this episode. But again, going back to this is the task positive network of your mind, giving it a task to focus on as to not be distracted by anything else that's coming in. This is actually the core of a wonderful meditation called Transcendental Meditation, which I have been practicing for quite some time now. It is taught by an individual instructor and you are given a word or phrase to repeat internally during your time of meditation. Focusing on this one word allows you to brush aside the distractions that bombard our minds during what seems as the most vulnerable times. I must confess, when I'm having a difficult time falling asleep, I will focus on my phrase and within what seems like seconds, I'm asleep. So take the remote from Wanda and give it to Tony. Okay. Numero dos. Break the rules. Literally. In London, Dr. Hugh Selsick of the Insomnia Clinic in Bloomsbury has revolutionized treatment for sleeplessness in the UK and his studies are mind-blowing. I'm going to highlight two of the techniques in Dr. Selsick's practice. For me, one I found most interesting was ditch the eight hours. He says, dispel the myth that there's a certain number of hours you are supposed to get. It is ingrained in us, he says, that you are supposed to sleep eight hours a night. And it's not true. He goes on to say everyone is unique in every regard. So why would sleep be any different? Dr. Salse goes on to say some people need six hours, some people need nine. But saying we each need the exact number of shut-eye is like saying we all wear the same size of shoe. We're all different. During the program, the attendees follow a number of steps that are far from what we consider normal, but the results are surprisingly successful. One being, no set bedtime. Yeah, exactly. No set bedtime. But getting up at the same exact time each morning is a must, regardless of how much or how little you've slept or what you did the day before. The thought is once you have set a pattern of getting up at the same time each morning, you will begin to feel sleepy at the same time every night, thereby naturally building a consistent routine for when to go to bed. We compress their time in bed so their sleep is more compact and tighter, Dr. Selsik explains. In doing this practice, you would build your routine, and once you begin sleeping 90% of that block, then perhaps add 15 minutes in front of your normal time. 
incrementally adding 15 minutes until you've reached your desired goal of how much sleep you feel your body needs. Another concept was to leave the room. If you're lying in bed and you don't fall asleep within 15 minutes, get up. No need to lay in bed and read or browse your phone, but to make the habit of getting up out of the bed and leaving the room. Dr. Selsik states that the bedroom should only be available for two things, sleep and nookie, and you know what I mean. Everything else happens outside of the room. This will instruct your mind that once you are in the bedroom, it's time for sleep, nowhere else. Now, during the pandemic lockdown, this can be incredibly difficult as we juggle who works out of which room, what Zoom calls do you have today, which ones do I have tomorrow, so on and so forth. But if you have the flexibility to task outside of the boudoir, this is a wonderful start in resetting the habit for a solid night's sleep. Now, something to consider. Those participating in this program at the Insomnia Clinic of Bloomsbury, they did it for five weeks. So please, don't expect this to happen overnight. Resetting our routines is never easy, but since it is something we do every night, we might as well retrain our mind and body to create a better night's sleep. This Guardian article by Simon Parker was so interesting. I've only scratched the surface in sharing some points, so I've included a link to it in today's episode at CommitDownPodcast.com. And then finally, I'm going to leave this as one last suggestion, because if you're like me, I'm an avid tea drinker. And walking down the aisles, I'm constantly overwhelmed by the endless boxes of teas professing to help you sleep, helping you wind down, to feel calmer, to snore quieter, to float six inches above your bed. I don't know. Well, okay, I'm getting carried away here. But I found a stellar list of recommendations crafted by Amera Sleep mattress company and no this is not an ad unfortunately i just found this really interesting in my research i mean if you're going to put together a list of teas to fall asleep by then what better company than a mattress company to put this together i've compiled this list and it is up on the commentdownpodcast.com website in today's episode just look for tea list and you'll see it right there Calm It Down is a passion piece for me each week, and to be honest, it takes a full day and a half to write and produce, but it's the highlight of my week. So I just wanted to say thanks for listening in. It means the world. If you like the podcast, please drop me a line, say hello, and if there's something that you would like for me to go over, let me know. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe, healthy, and sane even though sanity is far overrated at this point. But until then, I hope you do get some rest. For right now, it is something that we all need. To find more episodes of Comet Down, hear the musical playlist from today's episode, or simply wanting to know where to send chocolate chip cookies, visit CometDownPodcast.com. You'll even find additional resources for emotional support, including our online community and our Facebook page. You're not alone. You are not alone. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer pianist, and nationally recognized, Sweet Tooth. And now something my attorney wants me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and is not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of such physician. Now, what I'd like to say. I am an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. 
I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this and future podcasts in aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we calm it down.